Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here on our next segment of commands coming out of the book called The Shepherd of Hermes. We're looking in his second book and we're going through the commands. This is part of a mini series. We've already covered about five, six chapters on commands. You can go back and check those out at the end of this video. In the first one, we did a lot of um background on where this book the shepherd of Hermes, comes from so you can check that out um in this class we're actually going to start off in the part of the book that talks about how man has two angels i decided to show you guys this picture um you remember we remember this you know from you know when we were children it seems like all of the cartoons would um portray this image of how man has a good angel and a bad angel both trying to influence his thoughts well it turns out that's actually true that maybe they got that information from the shepherd of Hermes, because according to scripture we actually do have a good angel and a bad angel who is actually trying to influence our thoughts and our behaviors that's what we're going to start off with in this book. Um, we're going to try to cover as many chapters as we can in about 45 minutes to an hour to finish up this series. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so we're over here in the book called The Shepherd of Hermes or the second book of Hermes called Commands. And we're all the way up here in what appears to be chapter four let me check that there is a error in the book nope it's actually a chapter six you can see um chapter five was on the sadness of heart and patience where we um talked a lot about um uh anger in that class that was a very important class you can go check that out but you see it was chapter five and the one after this will be uh chapter six um, it will be about uh, that we must fear God, but not the devil. If we get have a chance, we'll talk about that one today. But that's in chapter seven. But then so you look back here and you see this one is a kind of a misprint. But the thing about it, that same misprint is actually in the hardcover copy of the book. If you go look at the, the um, book I have on the shelf up there. It's found in the lost books of the Bible. It actually says the same thing. It goes. um chapter four then chapter five then chapter four then chapter seven so but anyway this is a small point we're going to go in and we're going to look at this chapter it says that every man has angels and the and of the suggestion of both let me read that again. I messed that up pretty good. Um, just like in the other classes, I'm going to try to ignore these brackets um, here. Um, it's going to um, um, affect the way I read because I'm just going to try to mentally skip over them. Um, but anyway, it says that every man has two angels and of the suggestion of both. That's like our picture said. Well, actually, like I said, it turns out that it's true. And this is it's going to show us how this all works. So let's look at verse one. It says, I commanded thee, said he, in my first commandments, that thou shouldest keep faith and fear and repentance. Yes, sir, said I. All right. Now, if this is your first class on commands, um, let me just give you a, a brief understanding of what's going on here. You have the angel of repentance here who was communicating with Hermes, who was given the task of writing down these commands and writing down the similitudes so that, you know, Hermes can read them and so that we all can read these commands. But he's given uh, Hermes uh, the commands firsthand. Like I said, this is the angel of repentance. And so they're kind of having a um, back and forth dialogue here where the angel will give him a command and sometimes uh, Hermes will have a question on that command. All right, uh, verse two says, he continued, but now I will show thee the virtues of these commands that thou mayest know their effects, how they are just and unjust. Now, this is the second book called Commands, but it could very well be that the commands actually ended at verse five. I mean, even in this one, it's not so much as giving Hermes a command so much as he's telling him about these two angels that are affecting man. And then in the next one, it says that we must fear God and not the devil. 
The next section is that we must flee from evil and do good. Um, and, it, and it goes on with even a few more that we must ask God daily without doubting, talking about prayer. Um, 10, you see, you can see 11, 12, but it kind of appears that, you know, the, maybe the command parts are over. And now he's, you know, um, just giving him additional information. But let's let's just go ahead. Uh, let's see, where are we at? Uh, verse three. Do thou therefore believe the righteous, but give no credit to the unrighteous. For righteousness keepeth the way, but unrighteousness the wicked way. Because here it is that he's actually, you know, talking about the virtues or the virtuous nature behind these commands. So he's telling, you know, Hermes to, you know, believe in righteousness, but give no credit to unrighteousness. Uh, what he says, for righteousness keepeth the right way and unrighteousness the wicked way. And so we can see this, you know, going on all around us. Those who want to do wicked, you know, those that are unrighteous want to do wickedly, while those who are righteous are striving to uh, keep the commandments of the Lord. And that's what he's talking about there. Verse 4 says, Do thou therefore keep the right way and leave that which is evil? For the evil way has not a good end, but has many stumbling blocks. It is rugged and full of thorns and leads to destruction and is hurtful to all such as walk in it. But, you know, it, it kind of seems like this is, you know, opposite nowadays. It seems like the wicked people are having the most success in life, you know, and that goes all the way back to the days of Habakkuk, who said, you know, why does it seem that the wicked prosper and those who do righteous are, um, are, you know, kind of, you know, humbled at this time. Well, it, it is the time that we live in. We're living in an age of wickedness right now where wickedness is, is dominant. The age of righteousness is actually not going to start until after the tribulation is over. Then we go back or go to the way things are supposed to be down here on the earth where, where righteousness prevails. But in this time that we're in now, wickedness prevails. You know, um, good guys finish last. That's kind of like, that's kind of true in where we are today. Verse five says, but they who go in the right way walk in evenness and without offense because it is not rough nor thorny. But, you know, even though those guys seem to be prospering, you know, it seems like they have a hard time about it. You know, they, they have to fight for what they want, you know, um, whereas the guy who is in righteousness, he may not have, you know, all the material blessings, but he seems to be at peace. You know, he sleeps good at night. Whereas the other guy, he, you know, he, he may have trouble sleeping because of all of the wickedness that's going around him. Plus, he's worried about people stealing his stuff. He may have a lot of stuff, but he can't enjoy it because, you know, the thieves are trying to break in and steal. And, you know, so that's what he's talking about here, how, you know, even though they seem to be doing better than those who are walking in righteousness, you, you have to understand that the true blessings of the Lord are peace. That's why you always hear people say shalom and peace unto you and wishing you peace because that's the number one blessing of the Father. Other than, you know, living through the tribulation, surviving to inherit the earth, you know, one of the main things that our, prom our Father promises us is peace. And, you know, we should recognize that when we see all of these wars breaking out here and there. Verse 6 says, Thou seest therefore how it is best to walk in this way. Thou shalt therefore go, says he, and all others, as many as believe in God, with all thine heart shall oh, go through it. Okay, so a little typo there. Um, you can find this book over on uh, YouTube if you don't want to purchase a copy of it. If you do want to purchase it, it's found in a volume of books called The Lost Books of the Bible and The Forgotten Books of Eden. But if you go in and just like the other books, if you just put in the shepherd of Hermes dot PDF, um, you can find the uh, translations of this book. This one here is actually the William Wake translation. It is the one that's found in um, the lost books of the Bible, the William Wake translation. Um, it is the bit the best translation. Um, I believe it doesn't have um, so many uh, intentional translation errors. Like when you jump over and you listen to the audio book of the Shepherd of Hermes on YouTube, 
I do, you know, recommend that. It is a very a good book. It's kind of dramatized and, you know, helps us to understand the story. That's, that's you know, when I listen to that is when I got a, a really good understanding of the Shepherd of Hermes. But the thing is, by the time I had read or listened to that audio book on YouTube, I'd already read this book a few times. So it may have just been, you know, helping me to understand. But it is a very good translation. I mean, a very good audio book. You can listen to it in about four hours, but it has some intentional, I mean, intentional translation errors. It doesn't take away the message so much you know it's just you know uh, i ain't gonna say a misplaced word because they seem like they did it intentionally um you and if you ever listen to it you know what i mean it doesn't take away from that the what the message is it just kind of make your eyebrows go up and say is that really what the father meant to say but anyway i still i still suggest it because um talking about that audio book what i did do one day was i sat down with the um the printed copy of the william wake edition and i had the, the audio book playing in my ears and i went verse by verse line by line to see you know did it match up you know and i gave it about a 90 95 i get I maybe even a 98 percent it's it's really good translation out of the whole four hours there's probably two or three words that's misplaced and you'll you'll see what i mean if you actually get around to listening to it but anyway and if you look down in the comment section of that video you'll see where i actually commented on it but <laughs> anyway let's go um verse seven says and now says he understand first of all what belongs to faith there are two angels with man one of righteousness and the other of inequity so like they were showing us in those car in those uh cartoons back in the day you know turns out we do have a angel on um that's actually in our in our ears it's these two angels are trying to influence us one is this says one is the angel of righteousness and the other is the angel of iniquity verse 8 says and i said unto him sir how shall i know that there are two such angels with man here says he and understand so now what he's going to do now is he going to tell us how to recognize these two angels when we see them influencing us of course we can't see the angels like we did in the cartoons you're not going to be able to look up and brush one off your shoulder like they did but you know you you will be able to see the effects you will be able to see the messages that they are telling us you know and like i've talked about in all of the videos you know i've gone through this i've experimented with this i've tried it i've sat back and i've listened to these two angels and what we're about to read is absolutely true they will talk. They will. You, you will hear them in the manner that's about to be described here. Verse nine says the angel of righteousness is mild and modest and gentle and quiet. When, therefore, he gets into thy heart, immediately he talks with thee of righteousness, of modesty, of chastity, of bountifulness, of forgiveness, of charity and piety. OK, so now this is, should be pretty easy to understand, but, you know, we really need to meditate on what he's talking about here. Because this is how we know when the angel of righteousness is talking to us. You know, he if, if he's there and he's communicating with us, he's going to be talking about stuff like bountifulness. He's going to be talking about forgiveness. When we're hearing, you know, these voices in our head, um, this small, still voice in our head, or we hear, and, and it doesn't really sound like a voice. It sounds more like our own thoughts. It sounds like... It sounds like our own thoughts speaking to us or, you know, it sounds like we're just thinking really. But when we're thinking of forgiveness, when we're thinking of charity, when we're thinking of piety, we are then under this angel of righteousness. Right. And the opposite is true, too. You know, if the if the if the what we're hearing is opposite. If we're not hearing about modesty or, you know, if we're hearing about arrogance or stuff, we're hearing from the other angel. If we're not hearing about righteousness, but actually hearing how we should actually break the law, then we're hearing from that other angel. He's going to be talking in the opposite manner. Then it says, notice how it says that the, the angel of righteousness is mild and modest and gentle and quiet. Now, this is important. Like we learned in the last class when we were talking about anger, how anger pushes away the righteous spirit. So, you know, if you if you if we are in a in a state of rage, there's no way we're going to hear the angel of righteousness. He's actually, you know, like we learned in that class, he's actually going to go somewhere else, you know, and wait till we calm down or whatever. 
well, if if his voice is already mild and modest and and gentle and quiet and we're yelling and screaming and fussing there's no way we're going to hear this angel of righteousness so there's no way we're going to be influenced by him and righteousness modesty chastity bountifulness forgiveness and charity and even piety all goes out the window because we're drowning it out and so that kind of makes it make sense you know we go back and we listen to that class we did on anger this is how it is that we're pushing this uh righteous angel away we're just drowning it out it's too quiet um verse 10 says when all of these things come into thy heart know that then that the angel of righteousness is with thee wherefore hearken to this angel and to his works all right just that simple Guys, just that simple. When we're sitting there in a moment, you know, maybe maybe in rough times or something's going on. But when our thoughts are geared toward what we read there in verse nine, you know, then we know that the angel of righteousness is there. This you, it's a it's a literal angel that's actually having his way with us and telling us about righteousness and piety and charity. And, you know, so when we hear this, you know, when something's going on, you know, and, we, and we're hearing things like forgiveness, we need to embrace that and, and let it let it have its way with us because it's trying to steer us in the right direction. But, you know, he's going to talk about this other guy, you know, and he's he's going to do the opposite. This angel of inequity, you know, if we find ourselves in a difficult moment, he is actually going to be trying to lead us in a whole different direction. We're going to learn here in a second. Uh, verse 11 says, learn also the works of the angel of inequity. He is first of all bitter and angry and foolish and his works are pernicious and overthrow the service of God. When therefore these things come into thine heart, thou shalt know by his works that this is the angel of inequity. So there we are, you know, we're in a difficult moment. And, you know, we're hearing things like foolishness, you know, we're hearing things like anger, the thing, this, we hear, it, those voice, those thoughts in our head are, you know, towards bitterness or towards angry, saying that, you know, we should be upset because this went on or we should be angry because that happened. That's the angel of iniquity. He's, he, he is speaking to us and he's trying to steer us in the, in the wrong direction. And so that's how we know if it's there. It's like I said, you're not going to be able to see him. You're not going to be able to hear him speaking like in an audible tone or anything. The only way you're going to be able to reckon is when he, when these thoughts start to enter your heart, when the thoughts start to enter your heart. If they are of righteousness, it is the angel of righteousness that's speaking to you. If it is thoughts of, you know, revenge and anger and bitterness, it is the angel of inequity that is speaking to you. All right. And it says, when therefore these things come into thy heart, thou shalt know that know by his works that this is the angel of inequity. Um, you know, I stress this because you can miss it. If you don't, if you, if you don't um, practice this understanding, you can miss it. And you can think that it's, you know, just your own thoughts or that those wicked thoughts are justified, you know, or something like that. No, it is actually the angel of iniquity that's trying to, you know, steer you in the wrong direction. Just like that wicked angel in that picture. Verse 12 says, And I said unto him, Sir, how shall I understand these things? Here said he, and understand, When anger overtakes thee, and bitterness, know that he is in thee. So, you know, like they said, life is 5% what happens to you, and 95% how you react to it. You know, whatever, you know, you, you, you see people reacting to different stuff in different ways. I was, I was watching a video, um, the other day, one of those, you know, random videos that kind of just show up and you had these two basketball players and, you know, um, there was a hard foul. They, the one player who had the ball, you know, he, he was a little bit upset anyway, because there was a hard foul, but he was walking away. Well, the other guy, as he was trying to give the ball back to the ref or to the player hit the ball in a way that it bounced off the offensive player's head actually hit him while he had his back turned the ball came and hit him in the head so that's the five percent what happens to you here he, he didn't already been 
he had already been hard fouled. Now here comes this ball and it hits him in the back of the head. He know where it came from. He knew that the guy who had just, just, just fouled him has now hit him in the head. So there's the 5%. So he turns around. You know, um, his his hands are still bound by his waist, but he turns around to see, you know, what's what's going on. And there is the 95 percent because he could have easily picked up his hand and hit the guy in the, in the face. You know, he could have felt justified. You've already fouled me once and now you've hit me in the head with this ball. You know what I'm saying? He could have hit him in the face. But he allowed the individual to apologize that the one who hit him with the ball was threw his hands up and say, oh, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. And so now the offensive player just said, OK, and just walked away. And that was it. You know, it could have went a whole nother direction. And that's the way life is. It's five percent of what happens to you getting hit in the head and the ball is just the five percent. But what do you do in return? Do you get the ball, hit the guy back? Do you go over there? Do you hit him? Do you start a fight right there? Do you do or do you just ignore it or do you just go? on and you know have a forgiving heart and so so in that moment you have the angel of inequity or the angel of um righteousness actually communicating with that offensive player you know and it seems as though you can look and you can say well the angel of righteousness had had his way the angel of righteousness won out because forgiveness won in the end he didn't get angry he didn't get foolish he didn't get violent you know, he actually, you know, forgave the guy and he went on and the game continued. Both players remained in the game and, you know, the game went on. Well, we have to remember that because, you know, if the if he had allowed the angel of bitterness or the angel of inequity to take him over in that moment, you know, they might still be on the floor fighting, you know, because, you know, that's just the way the anger of inequity is. He wants to he wants to get you kicked out of the game. That's his job. As his job is to make you do the wrong thing, to get you kicked out of the game, to get you killed, to get you destroyed, to make you sin, to make you, um, you know, offend. So he, he it's his job to destroy you. I'm going to just say that. <laughs> OK, but that's not the only thing. Right. He's saying anger, bitterness. Know that he's with thee. But watch this. It's going to get in some real details here that we can pay attention to. As also when a desire of many things and of the best meats and of drunkenness, when the love of what belongs to others, pride and much speaking and ambition and the like things come upon thee. Um, it's going to say, wherefore, know that this angel is with thee. So now this is the part we really need to pay attention because this is the part that's tricky. Sure, if something is telling us to be angry, sure, it's easy to recognize, OK, it must be an evil spirit over there. If it's telling us to be folly, you know, to be foolish, if it's telling us to be bitty. Yeah, we can notice him real easy there. But notice these are also ways to notice him, too. When the desire of many things. Ah, I, that one ain't so clear. That one ain't so honest when um, and of the best meats and of drunkenness. And like I said, I've gone through this I've, I've in myself and I've even watched this go on with my with my wife and with my kids and other people around me. This is actually how it happens when there's evil spirit, this angel of inequity is having an influence on you. It makes you want the best meats. You know, you don't you're not really satisfied with the food that you have available to you. No, you want to go to the store. You want to, you want to, all of a sudden you have a desire to, for some special thing down there at that restaurant or some, some other food that you haven't had in a long time. Whenever you feel that, Things could be going good. It might not be a distressful moment. You know, things may, it may just be a random day, everything doing good. Well, all of a sudden, if you want this, this, this different kind of food, you know, you get a desire, you get a, you get a, a desire for food. That's actually the angel of inequity that's having his way with you. And he's going to continue to mess with you. He's not going to stop with that meat. He's going to continue to mess with you until he starts to make you angry. He starts to make you bitter. He's trying to destroy you. Remember that of drunkenness yeah this is why you know, this in my opinion you know based on my own experiences this is why there's a lot of people in the world who are hooked on drugs you know because we're already subject to angry you know moments anyway we're always you know subjects to stress it's just a part of life well when the angel of inequity takes over he makes you want to go get drunk he makes you want to go um 
get high. He makes you want to, he makes you want, you know, drugs or whatever. And that's what it's talking about here. Um, out of the blue, all of a sudden you want, you want a beer or out of, a, you know, or whatever you just, he, he, he's driving you to that. You know, so, you know, just like the meats, if you just sitting there and all of a sudden you you have a desire for, you know, some type of drug, whether it be alcohol or nicotine or caffeine or or, you know, THC, whatever it is, chances are it's the angel of inequity that's having an effect on you. Um, and so those two things we need to we need to pay attention to so we can see this angel coming. That's why, you know, the um, Hermes was allowed to get this information and share it with us so we can recognize this angel of inequity or to say desire of many things. So we're not really, you know, happy with the stuff we got. We want We want to go shopping. We want, you know. We want other stuff that we don't really have. We're not satisfied with the things that we already have. We all we all of a sudden have a desire for many things. That is the angel of inequity trying to influence us. The love of what belongs to others. So now we're getting covetous. You know, we we see this thing that somebody else got, and all of a sudden we want that thing. You know, it ain't. You, it, this is the angel of inequity. Pride. Pride is is a sign of the angel of inequity. So you see a person in a proud moment, they're they're being prideful, they're being arrogant or whatever. That's the angel of inequity that's having his way with them. Look at this one. And much speaking. You say, well, coach, you talk an awful lot. Well, you know, I really don't talk that much when I'm not making videos. But if I find myself talking a lot, you know, when when, it, when I'm not intentionally doing to make a video, if I'm just walking around the house and I got to have much conversation with the kids, I'm, I'm recognizing that that's the angel of iniquity that's that's actually having an influence on me. He's 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 affecting me in this way that's making me want to keep talking and talking and talking. And that's where your arguments end up, because, you know, he is there to destroy you. So he's going to make you be talking. He's going to make you prideful in that communication. He's going to make you covetous in that communication. Maybe he's going to get some alcohol going in your life so you could be drunk in this continual prideful communication, lusting after stuff, design after many stuff. His job is to, if you compile all of this stuff, it starts to sound like, yeah, he's about to start a fight. That's the angel of inequities. That's, that's the angel of inequities. Um, his mission. That's what he's there for. He's there to kill us. He's there to destroy us. And the and the like things come up on the so you know this this is how we recognize that he's there and we need to meditate on this stuff you know go go back guys and find this book whether you listen to the audio book or download the PDF or whatever you do we need to study on this stuff because it's real like I said I didn't try this stuff I didn't observe this stuff you know when I when I was in the industry I used to be in the nuclear power industry and it was my job to observe people. I was a, I was an observer in most cases. You know, all I did was walk around with a clipboard and a piece of paper writing down what people did. Them people paid me 140 some thousand dollars a year to watch people. So I know what observing is and I've observed this type of behavior in other people and you know it, this is exactly this is exactly how it works. I may not be good at explaining stuff, but I promise you this is exactly how it works. So we really need to meditate on that and pay attention to that because that angel of inequity, he, he wants to destroy us. That's his job. Verse 14. When therefore these things arise in thy heart, know that the angel of inequity is with thee. Sin, therefore, thou knowest his works, depart from them all, and give no credit to him, because his works are evil, and become not the servants of God. We have to resist them. See, that's why it's important for you to recognize this stuff and understand this stuff, so when you see him coming, you can resist him. We can resist this angel of inequity. He's, he's a weak individual. He's tricky. He's slimy, but he ain't, he ain't got that much power. You know what I'm saying? He, he, if, you know, if he see, when we see him coming, you know, all we have to do is recognize him and then start to avoid him and he'll flee off. He'll run off, you know? So that's why it's important to meditate on this stuff. Give him no credit because his works are evil and become not the servants of God. You see this prideful behavior in the individual um, this covetousness, this drunkenness that, you know, those are not the, you know, those are not of the servants of God. And, you know, here, therefore, 
thou hast the works of both these angels. Understand now and believe the angel of righteousness because his instruction is good. So whereas before we got all of these ways to understand the angel of inequity, well, we just understand that the, the angel of righteousness to be true. I mean, to be opposite. Whatever the angel of inequity is telling us to do is telling us to be drunk, is telling us to, you know, talk a lot, is telling us to be ambitious, is telling us to um, um, desire many things and desire other people's stuff. Well, the angel of righteousness is going to be different. It's going to be telling us to be quiet. It's going to be telling us to be humble. It's going to be telling us to be um, uh, 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 satisfied with what things we already have. You know, it's going to, you know, telling us to be sober. It's going to be telling us to, you know, not care about, you know, being drunk or anything like that. Um, so we have to, you know, embrace his ideas um, because he his his job is to lead us to righteousness. His job, whereas the angel of inequity is trying to kill us, the angel of uh, uh, righteousness is trying to make us live. It's trying to give us life. 16 says, for let a man be never so happy, yet if the thoughts of the other angel arise in his heart, that man or woman must needs sin. So, you know, if we allow this angel of inequity to take us over, some bad going to happen. He not going to stop until we resist him or he makes us sin. Simple as that. You know, that's the, that's the only thing that's going to stop him. He's not going to stop on his own. You know, it's like a fire. As long as he has fuel, it's going to keep burning. We either have to put that fire out by resisting him or we let it continue to burn and it's going to consume everything until he's going to destroy something. He's going to break something. He's going to destroy us. That's why Hermes is being given these instructions so we can recognize this guy and we can start to fight him off, start to resist him. But let man or woman be never so wicked. If the works of the angel of righteousness come into the heart, that man or woman must needs do some good. And so this, this guys, it's been my observation. There's sometimes, many times, you know, especially as we progress through this thing and start to learn to put away unrighteousness, start to learn to put away anger and inequity and bitterness. You, you'll find yourself in a difficult moment. Maybe, maybe, maybe you have been allowing yourself to be angry and arguing. And then all of a sudden there's some, there's good thoughts start creeping in where the righteousness is trying to creep back in. It gives you the idea to pray for that individual that you, you are, you know, having this problem with, or that's having a problem with you or this angel of, of righteousness creeps in and all of a sudden it makes you want to apologize for what's going on. Even if you're not wrong, even if you're not in the wrong, you still want to um, um, kind of put some water on this fire that's burning. You want to apologize. You want to uh, 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 make things right and, and all of that. And so that's what it's talking about here. If, if you find yourself in a bad situation and you start having hints of good you need to embrace those hints of good that's the angel of righteousness trying to trying to creep back in and trying to take over the situation and lead it in the right direction and that other verse up there that's what it's talking about too if you find yourself in a good position everything going right and then all of a sudden you start to feel angry you fit start to feel ambitious start to feel talkative or whatever you 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 want to avoid that you want to you want to avoid that. You want to get it. You 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 want to stop that because it's just going to increase and increase until you actually commit a sin. Verse eighteen: Thou seest therefore how it is good to follow the angel of righteousness. If therefore thou shalt follow him and submit to his works, thou shalt live unto God. As many as shall submit to his works shall live un also unto God talking about the righteousness so we got to follow the good angel we got to learn who this who this angel of inequity is and start to avoid his antics keep him out of you know our our life keep him from steering us wrong because you know he just wants to kill us all right so if we can learn this learn how he is learn how to deal with him learn how to reject him then we can start to live unto god all right. Well, I was thinking of going on to another chapter, but I think this is important enough to stand alone by itself. So I believe I'm going ahead and end it here in the next class on commands. We will talk about that. We must fear God 
but not the devil. Again, in the meantime, go ahead and check out this book. Look for a link to it in the description of this video, maybe even in the comment section of this video, or go over and get that um, YouTube uh, audio book on uh, the Shepherd of Hermes. Like I said, it takes about four hours. That'll be one of the best four hours that you'll um, uh, spend in your life. And then maybe you can come back over to uh, Coaching the Fight and look at a playlist that my wife and I uh, put together. You know, we're doing commands again now, but we've also already done um, similitudes where we went through all of the book, the third book of the Shepherd of Hermes called Similitudes, covering every verse. We did a verse by verse study on all nine of those similitudes. So after you've listened to it, you can come over and you can, you know, get some. Um, additional information you know about it because between my wife and i we've probably read this book probably 30 times so we may have some stuff that you may miss by the first time you read it or maybe the second time but so anyway um if you got something out of this video go ahead and hit the like button if you didn't go ahead and hit the dislike button but leave us a comment either way and shalom